Hi there, I'm Kyle Winters, Technical Advocate at Cisco, and welcome to the first official video in this CCNA cybersecurity series. I'm really glad that you're here. Thanks for joining. I know preparing for the Cisco CCNA cybersecurity exam can feel overwhelming at first. There's a lot of material to cover, and it can be tough to know where to focus. In each of these videos, I'll walk you through the key topics, help you connect the dots between concepts, and share study tips to make your preparation more focused and effective. In this video, we're diving into domain one of the exam blueprint, security concepts. This domain makes up about 20% of the CCNA cybersecurity exam, and it forms the foundation for everything else. If you're brand new to cybersecurity or even coming in from another tech background, this is where the mindset starts to shift. You're not just thinking about networks or systems anymore, you're thinking about risk, protection, and how to stay one step ahead of attackers. We begin with the CIA triad, which stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These three principles are at the heart of nearly every security decision. Confidentiality means preventing unauthorized access to data. So think about encryption, role-based access, or multi-factor authentication. Integrity is about making sure data remains unchanged, using tools like hashes or digital signatures. And availability is all about keeping systems running and accessible when needed. Load balancing, backup systems, and DDoS mitigation all support availability. When you look at any security tool or policy, ask yourself, what part of the triad does this protect? From there, the blueprint moves into security deployments. You'll need to be able to compare different types of security systems, network-based, endpoint-based, and application-based. Each one has its own role and visibility. You'll also need to understand the differences between agentless and agent-based protection. Agentless tools don't require anything to be installed on the device. They pull data remotely. Agent-based tools live on the host and can offer deeper insights but require more overhead. Then we get into modern security platforms like SIM and SOAR. A SIM collects and correlates logs for analysis while a SOAR platform automates response workflows. You'll also want to know where legacy antivirus fits into the bigger picture and how newer tools are integrating with virtual machines, containers, and cloud environments. Next, you'll encounter a section loaded with terminology. This includes threat intelligence, threat hunting, malware analysis, reverse engineering, and threat modeling. You don't have to master each of these areas, but you do need to understand their purpose. For example, threat intelligence helps teams make informed decisions by learning from, from global threat data. Threat hunting is more proactive. It's about digging through logs or network activity to find evidence of compromise before an alert is triggered. This section also includes newer terms like, like DevSecOps, which is short for integrating security practices directly into software development life cycles. And terms also like RBA, also known as runbook automation, which is about using predefined playbooks to speed up responses during an incident. My advice for you here, build yourself a personal glossary, one sentence per term, keep it simple and include examples. That really helps when these concepts show up in scenario-based questions. Now let's talk about some of the key differences you'll need to understand, specifically the terms risk, threat, vulnerability, and exploit. These are often used interchangeably in conversation, but on the exam, precision does matter. A vulnerability is a weakness, like outdated software. A threat is anything that could take advantage of that weakness, like a hacker or a piece of malware. An exploit is the actual method used to carry out the attack. And risk is the potential impact or likelihood that this chain of events could happen. These distinctions often appear in drag and drop or scenario style questions. So make sure you can confidently sort out which is which. Defense in depth is another core concept. It's a layered approach to security. The idea is simple. 
If one control fails, another one should still be in place to catch the threat. So while an attacker might bypass your firewall, they could still be stopped by an endpoint detection system or even an alert rule in your SIM. This is one of those principles that shows up in real world architecture, policy design, and exam questions alike. You'll also want to get familiar with access control models. This includes discretionary, mandatory, and non-discretionary access, as well as role-based, attribute-based, and rule-based models. The AAA model, standing for authentication, authorization, and accounting, is essential, and it's worth reviewing what each part of the acronym actually covers. A lot of security issues tie back to poorly implemented access control, so expect to see questions in this area. The next topic is CVSS, which stands for the Common Vulnerability Scoring System. You won't be asked to calculate CVSS scores, but you will need to interpret them. For instance, you should understand what attack vector, attack complexity, and user interaction mean in the context of a vulnerability. You'll also see terms like privileges required and scope. The goal here is to get a sense of how a vulnerability's characteristics impact its severity and how quickly it should also be addressed. The final stretch of this domain looks at data visibility and detection. You'll want to understand why it's difficult to get full visibility across network, host, and cloud environments, and how that affects detection. There's also a section on using the five tuple, source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port, and protocol, and use these to identify suspicious traffic in grouped log data. And finally, the exam might ask you to compare detection types, albeit rule-based, behavioral, or statistical. And if you're not sure or you're not familiar, rule-based detections use signatures, things we already know, whereas behavioral and statistical detections rely on patterns and anomalies, which are key as we move towards more AI-driven threat detection. So that's domain one. It's concept heavy, but it lays the groundwork for everything else in the CCNA cybersecurity exam. Understanding these fundamentals will give you a huge advantage, not just on test day, but in real world environments where quick decisions rely on knowing these core ideas inside and out. In the next video, we'll dive into domain two, security monitoring. And that's where we start turning these concepts into actions by looking at the tools and data that drive real-time detection. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.